Okay, so we are recording. Uh, so first of all, uh, does anybody have any uh, questions about what's, well here, let me give you the, the quick rundown of what I know um, about what's going on the rest of the, I guess until middle of April. Uh, so if you have any issues with Zoom or anything, I am on campus today, so I assume many of us are probably within two or 300 yards of each other right now, but we're making sure our technology here works for um, for our classes. But, uh, um, you know, as far as I know, the idea is this. Uh, uh, starting Monday, because technically pharmacy is still on campus um, next week, as well as some sports teams, I think, which is, I guess, weird. Um, there will be, uh, all classes will not meet. So classes will start to not meet face-to-face. -face. Instead, they will be in some online format and you're supposed to get some sort of communication from uh, your teachers. So you already received a communication from me. All my classes will be on uh, Zoom from this point until let's say further notice until they let us know because you know it's possible that when we get towards middle of April, we, uh, um, you know, we, we're actually extending that time. I don't know. We'll have to see what ends up going down. Um, but, uh, you know, punchline there is, is that uh, you can expect your classes to be uh, online in one format or another in, with all your teachers, but look uh, at your emails to make sure that uh, how your different teachers are handling things. Because my understanding is, is there might be some situations for people who have like off-campus labs and things like that. I think specifically if like nursing students who do uh, residencies at some hospitals that if the hospitals are still accepting students that those things are still on so in any case make sure you pay attention to all your teachers and find out what the current scoop is for your specific uh, classes um, as far as uh, students traveling my understanding is is that uh, if you uh, I mean you're you're Next week is spring break, so today is our last class before spring break, so we'll meet again uh, the Tuesday following uh, spring break. I'll get all the exams graded um, uh, before uh, then. Click that off. Um, hopefully I'll get the exams graded in the next day or two. Uh, but in any case, uh, if you leave campus to go on uh, your break, um, then uh, you are welcome to come back to campus in that the campus is gonna remain open, normal business operations according to them, um, but students are encouraged to not come back to campus until the middle of April. So if you have another place to go, home or something like that, um, you know, that, that is, they're encouraging you to do that. I think the ultimate goal here is, is to have as few people clustered together as possible, but if you, don't have another place to go. Uh, I know some of you live significantly far out of state and things like that. If that if traveling home wasn't in the plans, campus is still open, the dorms are still open, um, is my understanding of things as they stand right now. But again, check your email often uh, as you know the plans can change instantaneously <laughs> uh, every hour or something like that. So. Uh, keep your eyes on that stuff. Also, increase the level of um, Slack checking as I'll post stuff up on Slack, and that's going to be our primary way of communication. So, getting a hold of me, Slack's probably the best way. Um, certainly, uh, uh, text message. Uh, you all have my my cell phone. It's on the bottom of my emails and everything like that. But Slack is just as good as a cell phone. Um, if you need to set up a uh, meeting, you need help with something, or you know, times you would have just popped into my office, uh, message me. We can jump on a quick Slack uh, uh, meeting where we can share screens and all that stuff. And I can even make it so that I can control your screen if you need me to like debug something or, or something like that. So hopefully, it doesn't impact our classes too much, other than the fact that uh, we won't be in direct proximity um, uh, to each other. But you know, do utilize all those resources. Try not to view uh, this as being time off of school, but a, but rather just a different format. So uh, I'm around, so take advantage of, if you wanna just get on Zoom and, you know, process through homework, we're gonna still have homework. We're gonna still do everything the way we did before. We just won't technically come and sit in the classroom for the time being. Uh, my cruise did get canceled. 
just this morning was uh, my wife and I decided we would go on it. Um, that was, I think Noah's uh, comment, he got a star for the day, made some sense. You know, we had decided that we would go on it if it was, if it was gonna go, but we would just self quarantine out of precaution. We came back, uh, but it was good that I held out because they canceled all, so Princess Cruises is canceling all cruises for at least the next 60 days. And um, so I got a, uh, um, they gave me a, uh, a 225% credit. So um, I get all the money back for the current cruise plus another 1.25, uh, well, basically it's 2.25 cruises for the price of one because I held out and let them cancel. Um, uh, yes, you can use the chat, but it's entirely possible I won't uh, um, see it pop up. So if you do have a question, probably the path of least resistance is to just unmute and interrupt me. I promise I won't be offended. I think there's a way to like raise your hand too, but um, I don't know if I'd see that either. So sometimes I kind of get into a little zone. So I'll try to keep my eye on the chat, but no promises there. That might be easier for you guys to chat with each other or make fun of me or whatever. Either way, I don't necessarily uh, care. Um, you actually lose points for the next belt, Noah. Um, nobody likes a smart ass. So, um, <laughs> Lippman is getting reimbursed and we will be Corona free. Well, I can't promise the Corona free thing, but we'll see what happens. And yes, Colin, you can go to the bathroom, but you can't get out of your chair. So that's the uh, um, punchline. So are there any questions about the current state of things moving forward, either from my class's perspective or just university in general? I can I'll share with you anything I know. I'm gonna take that as let's say a no, unless somebody else why did they pick April? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm guessing that's just roughly 30 days and they figured that, you know, they, they're committing to a, uh, uh, to this plan of action or at least this plan of action for the next 30 days. So we can all kind of plan on that being at least the case and giving them the opportunity to make additional choices after that. Um, otherwise, you know, if they say that, you know, just classes will be online for the next two weeks and then it ends up being extended. I think they're just kind of being proactive and considering that it's, you know, likely to be longer than that to be safe. So let's just go ahead and commit to 30 days. Uh, I mean, if you ask me my actual opinion, my actual opinion is, is that we're probably going to be online the rest of the semester. Uh, and that's not based on any information that I have from administration or anything like that. I just think that's going to be the, you know, safest uh, path. Um, but again, you know, I'm around. Um, happy to meet with you on Zoom. If you are around in the Mequon area and things don't get, uh, you know, to where restaurants and stuff are shutting down, I'm, I'm happy to meet in, you know, relatively small groups. Um, but, you know, just be wise and, you know, if you want to grab some lunch sometime or something like that, I'm happy to, uh, to do that uh, until they start making us stay in our homes or something. So, you know, be careful, wash your hands a lot, try not to get in too close to groups. And, you know, really, the, as young people, uh, you're probably the biggest risk to everybody else because you're, uh, um, uh, you're in the age category where it's pretty likely that, um, even if you get the virus, it's probably not going to be detrimental to you. But now you're a carrier and you can go and bring it to church and things like that to, you know, that was always our concern that we might get some, you know, old person sick at church. So just be wise and uh, stuff like that. Uh, okay, so I'll ask, will campus open or are we supposed to stay somewhere else? Uh, yeah, so I already, I, I already covered that, but you know, the idea is that the, um, I don't know what the rules are for spring break, if students were, were allowed to stay here for spring break or not. I mean, I don't, I, I don't think that rule has changed. So if you were allowed to stay here for spring break, I think you still can. But if they forced you to get out, I think you still have to get out. 
but post spring break, um, you can return to the dorms. There is an email that was sent out to all students. You guys should have an email um, that you should read. So, uh, you know, again, drastically increased. My experience with some of you has been that you don't check your email, you don't check Slack, you don't check on these things. The overall arching thing is suck less. Uh, your, you know, your, your technology majors, these things should be easy for you to do, set up uh, notifications and all that stuff. Um, so if I say something on Slack, I'm gonna assume that you've seen it. Um, but uh, I, you know, the, the current state of things is the dorms will remain open post uh, spring break, so you can come back, but you are encouraged not to come back um, to, again, minimize the amount of clustering on campus with too many people together. So, you know, do whatever is best for you. If you can go home to your family, uh, do that. If that's not an option, um, then you can come back to campus. All right, anything else? All right, so let's dive in then. Um, let's see, so I'm gonna flip over. So actually, almost definitely, you're gonna have to speak up because I'm gonna be over on my virtual machine, so I will not see the, uh, the chat unless I flip back by. So if there's a question in chat or something from somebody who can't, use the mic then somebody needs to yell at me uh somebody needs to yell at me and uh i can flip back over real quick and read it but in any case uh let's see where we left off we're transitioning towards our uh shunting yard thing uh last time we wrote a uh um, let's see, what do we do? Oh, we talked about pointers and things last time. So we didn't really make any progress on our, uh, our code last time, but we clarified the idea of uh, um, kind of the history of, well, the evolution of strings in the C language since it's, or C++, since it's, this, this core language has been around for such a long time. The early days of strings were much less user-friendly than the modern way of using strings. Um, so, for a modern day C++ programmer, you would probably use the string class, which allows for concatenation and all these fun things, does make our life a little easier, um, but not at the cost of kind of forgetting about um, how um, uh, pointers uh, work, because pointers are gonna still be an important part of working with arrays and, uh, and things like that. Uh, okay, so let's just, um, kind of return ourselves to the where we were at the beginning of last class so I can uh, remind myself where things are. Uh, I did put up some code I think a couple of classes ago. Did I create? Okay, yeah, I created this thing called uh, String Factory. And uh, so String Factory up to this point, I created a single static method in here. So at the end of class, two classes ago, we were um, just introducing the idea of uh, static. So, uh, um, so we have a public method that is a static method. Um, it's gonna return a pointer to a, uh, to a collection of strings. So it's a string pointer, all right? Um, it's gonna be called split. Uh, just real quick, let me just see. So that's the thing we saw last time. Um, that you can't have something that returns a string array because the format for arrays in C++ is different. So if you need something that is an array, you need to use a pointer to the beginning of that array because that's what arrays are. Arrays are a bunch of buckets of memory stored in contiguous memory. So split is gonna return a pointer to the beginning of that collection. All right. Now, depending on how we ultimately, go ahead. Question? I was just gonna ask, so string pointers look exactly the same, whether they're just pointing to a string or whether they're pointing to a string array, is that right? Correct, because in both cases, in both cases, they do just point to a string. 
just in some cases it's a single string in other cases it's the first string in a collection of strings that are in contiguous memory got it yeah so they, they they're they're both doing the exact same thing um, as the programmer we almost have to know what kind of animal we're dealing with so to kind of to your point uh, we don't have a clean way of differentiating um, between the what is the beginning of a string array and what's just a string so with that in mind if we think about how Java has handled this Java has handled this by saying strings are handled by pass by value right so if we pass a string to a function in Java and we make a change to that string that change is not permanent so uh, if we were to return a string from split let's say I would just return that so this would indicate I'm returning just a string where this would indicate I'm returning a pointer to the beginning of a string array even though it could be a pointer to an actual string because remember we got to go back to something we even talked about in 200 is in C++ the programmer is empowered to make this decision we get to decide how our variables are passed I can pass something so I mean here let's just keep kind of going down this uh, path since we're, we're down it let me go into driver here and I'm gonna go ahead and just create a um, void change val and this guy will take in an int a as a parameter and we'll say a is equal to seven like this and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, comment these things out again all right so I'll say int B is equal to four I'll say C out B then I'll call change val passing it B and then I'll print out B again All right, so in this case, change val returns nothing. So of all these examples I'm gonna give you are gonna return nothing because it ultimately is coming down to whether this value is passed by value or passed by address. Remember we had those questions asked on the exams and stuff in 250? All right, so as I've advertised it right here, I am taking in an actual int called A. Not a pointer to an int, so this is being passed by value. So when I get that value A, and if I want, I can go ahead and print out A in there, just proving that it did get changed. So A will come in, I change A to seven, I print out A, which should print out a seven, but then we'll return to the original code, I'll print out the value of B and we'll see that it's still four. So B started off as four, I'll print out a four, I call change val passing B by value. I'll change it here, seven, print it, I see the seven, this function ends, then I print the original value of B again, and we see that it's still four, because since it was passed by value here, this change did not have side effect. All right, so let's see that to be a truth. So there's my four, seven, four. All right, um, anybody have any questions about that specific example before I show you an alternative example using integers still? Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna steal this code and I'm gonna create a function called change val pointer and instead of this guy taking an int A, he's gonna take an int pointer A. And we're gonna say star A is equal to seven. We'll go ahead and print out star A. So this says print out the value at this memory address or set the value at this memory address equal to seven. Print out the value of this memory address. But now we're gonna see that B is actually changed to a seven. Oh, that's not what I was expecting. Hold on, everybody relax. Into A, A star A gets seven. 
Oh, sorry. I'm not pretty passing in a pointer here. I need to pass in the address of B. I didn't finish my compatibility here. So B is an int. I printed out B here. Then I'm calling change val two, passing it the address of B, uh, or change val pointer, sorry, not change val two. I was still calling my old function before. The way I had it written before, this would have given me an error because B is an int, not an int pointer. Int pointers are memory addresses, so I'm gonna give it the address of B. So change val pointer expects an int pointer. I'll pass it the address of B. This guy will come in and change the value at that address to seven. We'll prove that it changed the seven then when we return here, we'll print out the value of B showing we now have the new value. So there's our seven, four, seven, seven. So this is something we could not have accomplished in Java because Java makes the decision for us. It says, if you're working with integers, they are passed by value. We do not have a syntax that allows you to pass an integer by address in Java. We do have that syntax. We are empowered uh, in C++ to make that decision. So here's two different functions that both effectively operate on integers. One is taking the integer by value. The other one is taking the integer by address. The one that takes a value has no side effect. The one that takes the address has side effect. All right, so questions on that. I heard a, a mumble. Uh, so the asterisk uh, basically tells you whether or not it's a pointer? Correct, yeah, this is the syntax for pointers in C, in C++. This says the type of value I'm taking in is an integer pointer. That's what a, a, an int star is, it's an integer pointer. This is an int, this is a container built for holding an int. This is a container built for holding an integer address. That's what pointers are. So the first one will actually change, will delete one version of memory and make an allocate new memory to change that variable. Correct. And the second one is just changing the contents at that location of memory. Correct, A is a copy of whatever was passed in, i.e new memory as you put it. Whereas down here, A is a pointer to the same place in memory as what was passed in. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is, I mean, so this is, I think, a really good example to kind of close this gap. I know we're still not making progress on another thing, but I want to really drive this point home um, because this, these little examples tell the whole story of how memory works. And if you go all the way back to 200, when I said that people, uh, when they're first learning about memory addresses, get intimidated because it, it's, it's scary. If you just think about these things as things, this is a variable built for holding this kind of thing. This is a variable built for holding this kind of thing. A memory address is no scarier than a number. It's just a different kind of thing. Um, you know, maybe we think of it as being a little bit more volatile, so it's the difference between carrying a glass of water and carrying a glass of acid. But if you don't spill it, both of them are equally, uh, you know, kind of an equal type of thing, right? But Java would not have given us the option to take an integer by address like we can in C++. Java makes the decision for us and it says whenever you're using ints, they're always passed by value. So this is like Java's default. Whereas this allows us to do something that Java does not. We get to break tradition and choose to take an integer by address. Now we might say, would we ever want to do that? Maybe not. You know, it's, it's gonna be whatever's the right tool for the job. 
most of the time, if you're operating on a number, more than likely you're not interested in having that number change external to the function. You probably want to use the number, do some stuff with it, and ultimately go back to wherever you were in the program. But if you were in a situation where you wanted to take in a value and possibly modify that value for everybody else in the larger program, C++ allows you to choose to do that. All right. Similarly, if I say void change string, and this guy took in a lowercase s, right? Took in a string s as a parameter, and we set s equal to hello, and we said c out s backslash n. versus void change string pointer, which took a string pointer s as a parameter, and we said star s is equal to hello, c out star s. So this is kind of our same example here, but with strings. So let's go down here and we'll say string C is equal to world. Uh, here, I'm gonna just move this down past the int stuff. And then I do a C out C and then I say change val or what is it change string change string and I pass in C and then I do a C out after that let me just go ahead and comment out the stuff up top here so we don't muddy the waters with it so I have a string C equal to world. I print it out, I'll get a world here. Then I call change string, which comes into this guy. This guy's taking in a string as a value. I set it equal to hello. I print out hello. Uh, then I come back out and we're wondering, will it print out world or will it print out hello? it prints out world. Why? Because my string was passed in by value. String was passed, oh sorry, this one. String was passed in by value. But the second version of it says, give me the address of that string. I'm gonna change it to hello, print it out. So I'll say change string pointer passing it the address of my string. And now we see that it's permanently changed to hello. So there's the exact same example using strings as we did with ints, noticing that we chose as, a, as the programmer to like the Java default for strings, pass by value. That's how Java has decided to work with strings. But in, um, uh, but in uh, um, C++, we can choose to take in a string by address, which would then give a side effect. has side effect, can't accomplish in Java. Because Java makes those decisions for us and Java doesn't have a special syntax for talking about memory. All right, so does that kind of drive the point home about uh, how pointers work? We get to choose as the programmer whether we wanna pass something by address or pass something by value 
let's call it 99% of the time, passing one of our primitive types like ints and chars and things like that would be passed by value so Java's default makes sense. We might also say that if you're just working with a string, plain Jane string, Java's default position of passing that by value also likely makes sense. But maybe you might say, well, changing a string might be something I might want to have side effect more often. So maybe Java's decision to make it be passed by value by default isn't as, quite as cut and dry. Um, but arrays in Java, so let's um, do this. We'll say void change array. And I can say this takes in an int. Can I do that as a parameter or do I have to still say pointer? Yeah, it looks like I can. So we'll write this two different ways. And I'll just say a at bucket one is equal to, I don't know, negative three or something like that, just because. Um, let me quickly write a um, function called display array. And this guy will take in an integer array. Um, just for the current time being, let me just take in an int size as well. And I'll say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than size, i plus plus. We'll visit why I'm doing this here in a second and then look at the alternative. I think we looked at that a little bit last time using calling size of to get the, uh, um, the size of an array but we'll see this here in a second. All right, um, so we'll take in an integer array. I'm gonna go through and I'm just gonna do a C out. Um, a at bucket I, maybe followed by a space. And then at the very end, we'll just do a C out backslash N to kick it down the line. So this will display the contents of our array. So let's work with that here real quick. So I'll go ahead and I'm gonna create an int array AR. And can I give it a, I'm gonna create a integer array AR and I'll set it equal to one, two, three, four. So I'll go ahead and load it up with some values. It's interesting that I still get the um, Slack notifications, so hopefully none of the faculty say something really funny. Because um, <laughs> I assume everybody is seeing those, right? Um, but I only get the little snippet. Um, oh, it's because it's coming in through my Slack on here, not my, not ah, whatever. We'll just call it good. All right, so in any case, uh, I'll, go ahead, I'll go ahead and call my display array, passing it AR, and I'll pass it a four for the size of that guy. And there's my one, two, three, four for the contents of that array. Now I can also pass it size of AR. Okay, and notice here that we get one, two, three, four, and then we get all this other crap in memory, right? Because the size of it is the size of the values that are in there. So an int is four bytes times four of them. So this is 16 bytes of memory. So if I want to use size of for this, I would have to say size of AR divided by size of int. There's my one, two, three, four. So I'll kind of give you both those lines. We'll just kind of treat this, this code that I'll end up pasting on Slack as like a, um, 
a cheat sheet for all things pointers, something, something like that. Um, okay. So why would you pass in size of, if it works just as well, just passing in AR? Historically, it wouldn't have. Um, okay. So that's why if you've uh, seen for some uh, um, main, you'll have an int argc and a char pointer pointer argv. Um, this is the argument count. This is the array. Once it started being written like that, char pointer argv, very likely arrays like this could have been calculated for their size given the type and given the values that were in there. So this is a string array just as this is a string array. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. So when yeah. we're using the size, do you want us to pass in size of or just the array? Uh, well, I, I, I don't care. So I mean, you know, so what we could do here, um, if we just, uh, um, you know, let's cheat this a little bit. I'll take this stuff out for now. I'll go ahead and call this guy display array and he'll take in an int array like this. And I'm gonna call this guy display array helper. And what he'll do is he'll call um, display array helper, passing it AR and passing it size of AR divided by size of int. And this is a void function. So this will show you both worlds, how you could internally calculate it. So here now I'll just call display array like this. Let's see it work real quick and then I'll go through that. 26. What is it complaining about? Oh, it's giving me a warning that it will return the size of a int pointer, which we know, which is why we're dividing it by the size of int. So it's warning us for something that we did uh, um, fix. So I'm thinking this is going to give us a Well, that could actually be interesting. Hold on a second. Only giving us two there. So size of array function, AR will return size of int star, which is 32 bits. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is giving us 32 bits. And also why is it showing the first two values then? Let me see something here. What if I change this to an int pointer? Will it behave differently? It behaves the same, it doesn't have the warning. Yeah, so an int pointer is coming in as 16 uh, bits. That's why we're getting eight. Because it's returning the size of an integer pointer rather than the size of an array. But it is fascinating that it's 
behaving differently inside of the function than it is outside of the function. So the way that the arrays are being treated are from like two different decades. So the way they're being treated in Maine is uh, um, the most modern way where I can get size of and divide it to get the value. But the way it's being treated inside of this uh, function is um, size of the array is giving me a different, uh, it's giving me the value of this particular value. AR is a pointer to a single integer. The value of AR is a integer address. So this is returning the size of an integer address, not the size of an integer itself. Um, so with that in mind, we would say size of AR, which is an address times size of int. And in order to get the warning to go away, we have to take old school int pointer in instead of an integer array. So size of, I'm just gonna cheat it here real quick. This still gave us too much. So we need to divide that by two to give me the actual size of it. This is really actually kind of fascinating. that's not really an accurate thing because if I go and I put a five into this one, I still only get the one, two, three, four because of the divide by two. Um, it, it doesn't change the, the math here. The math that's happening up here is size of AR is giving me the size of a uh, integer pointer. So the size of a memory address. I happen to be dividing that by two. So the size of a memory address is, um, it's a 64 bit operating system. So um, that's gonna be 64 divided by eight, which is eight. So that's eight bytes. Eight divided by two is four. So that's the number of elements in this array. That's why this works. So this is giving me a 64. The size of an integer pointer is 64 bits. Not because an integer is 64 bits, because, but because a memory address is 64 bits in a 64-bit operating system like Ubuntu. But that's different. This is kind of exciting, actually. Um, see out, so if I say see out size of AR here, backslash n and I print out the same exact thing out here. We get two different values. AR out here, the size of that guy is the number of bytes to hold that many ints. So it takes 20 bytes to hold five uh, four byte ints, which is what we have here. Five four byte ints, 32 bit ints. But inside a display array, the exact same code is showing the size of that AR pointer as the size of a single 64-bit memory address. So you're actually seeing two different renditions of array models in C++ here um, because we're seeing one that is more modern that's happening inside of main 
and one that is uh, more ancient, which is happening inside of our function call. Let's see uh, if we can force it. So if I say int pointer ar, or int, uh, take a, a, an array, this guy gave us a warning. Let me do a remove a dot out here. Yeah, so it's still, so warnings are still producing. So just because this is a warning, it's not an error. It's um, uh, still uh, producing a, uh, the same, it is producing an output, an executable for us to run. So we have two different size things from the exact same code. I never thought to run it through like this. So with that in mind, C++ size of array. Let's see if there's another. And it looks like there is not. So we would have to use a more uh, modern array implementation. So there's uh, in standard template library. So is the difference between the two just that one's in a function and one's in main? Yes. And and main is a function, but main is a uh, is is kind of a special function because all programs begin and end with main. Uh, so we're actually looking at two different implementations, one that's been more recently updated than the other. Uh, Let's see if there's a way for us to um, hack it. If not, it's not that big a deal because that's we have our linked lists which can report. You know, we wrote our own replacement for arrays, if you will. Yeah. So, like, see in this example, they're taking in the length of the array um, rather than calculating because that's that's the common way that you would have done it in C and C plus plus historically. Yeah, so here's a more modern version of an array. So here, let's just throw it in there so we have it documented. Um, uh, and this guy lives where? Is it like an array.h or something like that? Uh, in array. So we have a namespace called array, which gives us access to this like more modern array thing thingy. And this guy can then take in a, um, so out here, if I do um, a C out um, my array dot size. That's kind of like saying array dot length in Java. Similarly, I can um, void, um, we'll just call this array size, and he's gonna take in an array AR as a parameter, and we'll do a C out AR dot size. Oops. 
you probably have to tell the kind of value it's taking in. So an array of ints. We can't. Uh... We can't force the number, the size in there, can we? Or do we just have to do it like this? Or do I have to do something like that? Let's see about taking an array object as a parameter. Or we're going to have to pass it like as a void pointer. Vectors. That's very interesting. It's documented poorly. Okay, let's see. So an array is a list. So is it just one this? Interesting, because I can try to take an avoid pointer AR, and then I have to tell this guy that he is actually an array. All right, let's look at the reference of the actual array class. So this is a template for a class called an array, which means that it's actually a class. 
So this guy would take in an array pointer called AR. That's incredibly helpful. All right, so these are the Okay, so it looks like it would take in a array of ints. Eesh. Elements. Right, so this guy lives in standard. All right, so it's actually a struct. saw a make array it would be helpful to see what he returns
Oh, that's uh, another implementation based on top of vectors. All right, so this is in C11. This is a container that encapsulates a fixed size arrays with the same semantics as a struct holding a C style array. Yeah, this guy just says it would take it in just an array. So it says this would take in an array called AR. So it doesn't like that. Yeah, let's see if that is a, our experience has been that Visual Studio is pretty good at this. So let's just see what kind of error we get out of here. Maybe it'll give us a cleaner error. Oh, uh, we have to actually say it's an array template. So this is complaining about the struct of array. I'm gonna look up this uh, this guy real quick. I get it, but I don't want to give it a second number. So then the way it should work is like this. I want an array of int. Can I say void? You know, because it wants me to take in something like that. Which is saying I want to take in a three bucket array. But I'm, I don't want to take in a three bucket array. I want to take in any kind of array. So how do I say that? Let's see if it will give me a C plus plus array. Int generic size.
My question can wait, but I have a question about something we were talking about a while back today. Yeah, no, go, go ahead and ask it while I'm just kind of sifting through this stuff, because I mean, the, the answer is going to be something stupid to this, but okay. go ahead. Um, so regarding like the pointer stuff and in the method, you were kind of, I think it was like star something, I guess star something and something star confused. So. Uh, I said sorry, are like that. But no, um, it was like with the pass by value, pass by reference stuff. So when you were using it in the method, I, I think it was star something, and then when you passed it to call it, it was the ampersand something. So oh oh, so this guy here. Right, but when Big you were like, pointer. Up writing here. It in the method. Yeah, so um, like the star A. Um, here? Like, yeah. Is that just like that holds a literal and then the ampersand passes a uh, memory yeah, address? So whatever you see the a star, you're talking. Mm -hmm. So a star, would you see a star for an assignment like this? This says, this is a variable capable of holding one of these guys. So that is an address of an integer. So this guy knows how to hold an address of an integer. So what do I send him? I send him the address of an integer. Mm -hmm. So that, so uh, the uh, ampersand and the star are, are like opposites of each other. Ampersand says the address of something. Star says the value of something. So when I'm using a variable, ampersand B says the address of this guy. When I'm using a variable, star A says the value at that address. Okay. So I'm getting the value at this address equal to seven, as opposed to me saying A is equal to seven, which is saying I'm setting A equal to the memory address. Oh, I'm not giving it a, an accurate address, but it's the, the point is that A here is a bucket capable of holding an address. Star A is the value that lives at that address. So star A equals seven says set the value at this address equal to a seven. When I'm defining a type, this is saying, I expect you to give me the address of an integer. I expect you to give me an integer pointer. When I'm sending a value in, he expects an integer pointer. So I'm going to give him the address of an integer, which is the, which is the, the value of an integer pointer. So that's the syntax. So the syntax is whenever you see a star, it means value of, when you see it being used. A star means value of, ampersand says address of. When you see it being defined, um, star means the address of ampersand. Uh, um, well, actually, if you were defining it, if you said I wanted to take in a int address, that wouldn't probably make any sense because that's going to be the address of an integer. So now I would say a is equal to 7. Because now you're working with an actual integer. So address of is the same thing as just saying int. But if I want to take the address of it, I would say, give me a pointer to where that guy lives. So this would be pretty rare. You wouldn't see something like that. It would be kind of just a, that's saying I actually want to take it in by value, even though it might have already been a pointer. So if I have an int address a, I'm saying, give me an actual integer. So give me the value that lives at an address rather than the address itself. So if that was the case down here, I would pass in B because B is an integer. But that particular example, I think, would be almost unfounded. You would very rarely see that. Very commonly, you would say, give me the address of an int or just give me an int. 
Does that make some sense? Sort of. I'm I'm still a little bit confused. So ampersand is. Let's put it in a slide here. Okay. Um, let's see, pointer syntax. I know we're out of time, but let me at least just get this out here. So if you need to log off, go ahead and <laughs> I'll uh, um, upload the video. But so, and, I, and I'm gonna figure out the thing for the array thing in the next little bit, I'll post that as well. Uh, pointer syntax, so if I have int star a, I am expecting you to send me the address of an int. So this is me defining an expected value or type. So an example of that is I can say uh, int b is equal to 5, int star c is equal to the address of b. So here's a real int, a solid int, and here's a pointer to an int, and I'm going to set that this, the memory address that c holds will be the address of b. If I want to get b, I would say, um, I could either print out B, so C out, uh, whatever. We'll just say print B, or I can say print star C. Those are synonyms of each other. Just say same, so I don't have to spell synonym. All right, so when I'm expecting a value, so I'm saying int b is equal to, this guy expects a solid integer. I'm giving him a solid integer. This guy expects the address of an integer. I'm giving him the address of an integer. Now when I go to use it, if I'm printing out b, I'm printing out an integer. If I were to print out c, this prints the address of an integer. Whereas star C, this prints the actual integer that lives at that address. Does that make more sense? I think so. So star C is just used when it already has an address to get the value. Yeah. When he is an address, star C says, give me the value at that address. Okay. When you expect an address, you would say like int pointer, int star says, give me an address. So this says, I, I am built to store an address. This says, give me the value at this address. Print the address of B will display the same as the line above. The address of B is the same value it's as C holds, because C holds the address of an integer, which is the address of B. So this is kind of like, uh, how do you call class methods versus how do you define class methods? When you're, when you're asking for a parameter to be passed in, if you want it to be an address, it's a int star. Give me the address of a type. But when you use it, uh, if you have a pointer and you want the address, you just use the variable name. But if you want the value that lives at that address, you would say star the variable name. That make at least a little more sense. Maybe go and do something along the lines of what we're doing here and uh, experiment with it um, until you kind of can get the, the two sides down.
Um, because it's not like a memorization thing as much as it is just, if I want a pointer, if I have a pointer, I want its value, I say star, name of the variable. If I want an address, I ask for an int star. That tells me you give me the address of that guy. Yeah, I think it was just the difference between call and define. That was confusing, but that makes sense now. Yeah, so try to think of it like the kind of the class method versus instance method. But hopefully all these examples here kind of show you the difference of what C++ allows us to do. This is almost the punchline of that statement from 200 when I say C++ empowers the programmer to make bad decisions. You know, we have full control over whether we want something by address or by value, where Java took that decision making away. Um, I'm not gonna post this code quite yet because I wanna give you the, uh, uh, the correct syntax for this. I mean, it, it's, it's gonna be something stupid. Um, but uh, for right now, you can just use your own built-in link, you know, your own link list type or something like that. But, you know, uh, I'm just, my knowledge of C++ predates um, this stuff. So uh, um, I'm sure I'll figure it out in a couple more minutes. I just have to browse through it and it'll be some stupid little syntax here to say, you know, of any size type thing. Give me an array of some size that I can ask about in a second. All right. Um, so I'll, I'll call it quits there. Uh, I'll post this code up. Uh, everybody have a safe trip. Uh, follow all the right rules. Make sure you are checking Slack often, 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 often. Check your email often, 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 often. And if you need to meet for anything, I'm happy to meet you on Zoom. All right, questions, comments, concerns, bribes. All right, I will see everybody in uh, a week from Tuesday.